Google Ads has a lot of different ways that you can use audiences to make sure that you're reaching the right people across the network. Now we're going to have a series of videos coming out covering all the different aspects of the audience manager in Google Ads, but today we want to start with the fundamentals. We're going to talk about all of the audiences that you can create for your retargeting campaigns using the Your Data Sources tab. For the majority of this video, we're going to be in our Paid Media Pros placeholder account. So there might be some areas where we don't have enough audience members or we might throw some errors. And if it becomes prohibitive, I'll jump into a different account. But for now, the plan is to stay in here. So if you see something that just doesn't look like it's right numbers wise, that's just because we don't really use this account very much. Today, we're going to be focusing only on the retargeting options within a Google Ads account. So the first thing I want to do, even though I'm already here, is show you how to find audience manager. So in the new Google Ads interface, that's going to be over here under Tools. And then under the Shared Library dropdown, we're going to click on Audience Manager. And you'll fall on a page that looks just like this. Now, as you can see at the top of the page under the words Audience Manager, there are a few different options. Right now, we're highlighted under Your Data Segments. And this is where we're going to spend the entirety of this video. But in future videos, we will cover the other sections, tell you how they work, and how they can work together to reach your right audience. For now, we're just going to go through all of the different types of retargeting. So let's come over here to the blue plus button. Now you can see the high level categories of remarketing audiences we can make. And yes, I'm going to use retargeting and remarketing interchangeably. They mean the same thing to me. Let's start off with the first option, the one you're probably most familiar with. That's going to be website visitors. First, you'd give your segment a name. I'm not going to do that because I'm not going to save any of these. But then in the second section, we get to see segment members. It's going to default to visitors of web pages. If you wanted to drop this down, you could say visitors of a page with specific tags. So if you have additional tags on your website, you can add those in here and you just check the button next to it. Right now, you can see that we obviously have a placeholder, a book us to speak option, and then a purchase action. You could also create a new tag directly from here. You would then give it a name, get the tag, install it on your website just like you would any other script. And then you can create a remarketing audience based on those specific tags. For now, I'm not going to do that. And let's go back to just the regular visitors of a web page. Now we need to start filtering the actions that we want people to take. There's going to be a few different ways that we can do this. Right now, we only have web page visit as the drop down option. There's nothing else here. And then we get to choose our look back window. If I were to do nothing else to this list, it would be targeting everybody who came to our website within the last 30 days and visited a page with a regular Google tag on it. But as you can see, you can refine the action. There's a few different options we've got. So first, let's refine this. And now we can take any of the parameters here. So whether the page URL or referrer URL contains, equals, starts with, ends with, does not contain, equal, start with, or end with. And then we have a whole field here that we can add. So let's say we only wanted to target people who had been on a thank you page. Just for sake of example, we could use this field and type in the thank you syntax. And now our list is effectively targeting anybody who's been to our page in the last 30 days, and that page has to have included thank you in it. You could then add additional parameters here if you want. But the thing is, this action must include every parameter below. So you could then also still say page URL, refer URL. You have all the same drop downs, but then you'd also have to say that this page includes thank you, but it also includes something else. So this is an and limiter, and it will narrow the size of your audience the more of these that you add. If you have a parameter you said you don't want, you can just click the X here and it'll go away. We then have the option to either narrow or expand our audience. So staying in the same vein with the and statement that we would use up here, you can say that they have to use and, meaning they are a visitor the last 30 days of the thank you page, and they also have a web page visit in the last 30 days, which should be pretty easy. But then if you refine that action any further, you would have an additional limiter and it would operate almost the same as if you wanted to add in another parameter up here. But the option you have here is that you can change the date range and you get to change whatever your logic is. So rather than contains, you could say that it also does not contain because maybe you want to exclude a group of users from this audience. So that's how you would use an AND statement. You could continue to use those and add in additional AND statements, or you could do what I'm going to do, and you could switch this to an OR statement. Now that we've changed it to OR, you can see the text is different. 
that says it will expand this audience segment to people who've taken the following action. We're now still targeting our thank you page visitors in the last 30 days, but now we can also say that we want to exclude anybody who visited the page in the last 30 days and went to a page that contains webinar, just for fun. So now we're going to be targeting anybody who visited a thank you page as well as anybody who visited a webinar page. Now you don't have to use the slashes in your naming convention like I am in these page URL fields. You could just have webinar without the slash, the thank you without it. Personally, I just like to add it in there. If we scroll down a little bit, we can then see that we still have the option to add another or statement. We could switch this back to and. But then one of the last pieces we have here is to exclude people who have taken the following actions. So let's click the add action button and all the same functions will be here. Web page visitor, last 30 days, refine the action, page URL, refer URL, all the same stuff we've already talked about. But rather than being added to the audience, these people are going to be excluded from your website visitor audience. We then have the option down here whether to pre-fill the segment with people who matched these rules in the last 30 days or start from the date that we created the audience. If you have a specific date of demarcation of when you want to retarget people, you probably want to start with an empty segment. But if nothing's changed and you're just trying to reach everybody who fits these parameters, there's no harm in pre-filling the segment with people for the last 30 days. That way you'll reach the audience minimum a little bit quicker. You can then add a description just so you can keep the audience straight, what it's supposed to be for, if you didn't give it a good name at the beginning, but hopefully you did. And then you just create segment. But again, I'm not gonna do that. So let's click cancel. If you would have clicked create segment, that new audience would be in this list here of all of the different segments that we have for this account. Now let's go ahead and start to talk about the second type of remarketing list. And this is going to be a very short section, but it's for app users. Now here's the problem. We don't actually have an app. There's nothing that we have here and we don't have any accounts that are currently using an app. But the good part is most of the app type of remarketing is going to be pretty similar to website remarketing. But as you can see here in this alert, you'll be able to create audience segments based on specific app actions. But to do that, you need to track your app and send the data to Google ads. Now that GA4 has been rolled out everywhere globally, it's pretty easy to set up your app tracking because everything also flows into your GA4 profile rather than being separate platforms when it was Firebase and Universal Analytics. We still have the options to do the pre-fill and the description, but for now, let's go ahead and cancel out and go to the next audience type. The next type of remarketing list that we can create is going to be based on YouTube users. Luckily, as you can guess, this one we have some audiences for. So you'd still give your segment a name at the beginning, and then you need to choose your YouTube channel. Ideally, you've already linked your YouTube channel to your Google Ads account in the linking section. And now that I've done that, you can see here that we get to choose which actions users have taken to add them to a list. So from this dropdown, we have anybody who viewed any video, people who viewed certain videos, people who viewed any video as an ad, certain videos as an ad, if they subscribed to the channel, visited the channel page, liked a video, added a video to a playlist, or shared any video. So this covers most of the range of things that you can do on YouTube. There's nothing about commenting or anything like that, but we at least get to have all these different breakdowns. Now, most of these have very basic parameters. And if I were to just leave it as viewed any video as an ad, the only other parameter I would then have is the date range. But a couple of these do have a little bit more specificity. So if I open this up, whether it's view certain videos or view certain videos as ads, once I click that, I still have the date range, but then I get to pick which videos from the playlists I want to include here. So think about the different types of videos you have on your YouTube channel. And maybe you wanna create an audience of users who watched certain types of videos, who engage with certain types of content, and you could then check the box next to each of those and add them to your audience list. And now anybody who has viewed any of these three videos as an ad in the last 30 days will be added to this group of users. Again, you still have the option for pre-fill and the description, but let's move on to the next one. And that next list is going to be a customer list. Customer lists allow you to upload your first party data into the Google Ads platform to create a remarketing list. The last few we talked about were based on the website tag, which was the website visitors, or any engagement on YouTube, which Google already owns. So you don't need to worry about setting anything up there. But for these customer lists, we have a few different options of how to do this. 
First, we can connect a new data source. This is if you want to use any of your CRM systems to import data into Google Ads automatically. One very popular one I know is going to be Salesforce. If we click there, we would then decide if we want to use Salesforce Audience Studio. We would then need to authorize it. Or if you want to use a third-party integration like Zapier, which you again would need to authorize. But for that, you would then be able to create either your series of zaps and your logic there, or your audiences in Salesforce, tie them to this data source, and then they will automatically be passed into the platform. The second option requires a more manual touch, and that's using a file upload. This is where we're trying to create everything manually, and we're not connecting any other data source. So let's go ahead and click Continue. Here we get to give it a name. We get to choose a customer type. This is a new thing to me. This is kind of fun. We'll put together a video on this sometime soon. But then for the purpose of this video, the biggest piece is going to be the data type and the upload. So you can decide if you want to upload emails, phone numbers, and mailing addresses, or if you want to use user IDs or mobile device IDs. Obviously, depending on which ones of these you have, it changes what you're allowed to do. Right now, let's go ahead and use probably what's the most common, emails, phones, mailing addresses. You would then need to upload your file by using the template that we have here. It needs to be a CSV, and you need to follow these formatting guidelines. Quite frankly, the easiest thing to do is to download the template and follow that. You would then drop your file here, or you could browse in your browser. There are some additional instructions we have in here, mostly just about prepping the CSV, making sure all the formatting is correct. But here you can see what the examples are and what the formatting kind of needs to look like. You would then need to check the box next to, next to the disclaimer that you're following all of Google's customer match policies. Down at the bottom, you then get the membership duration, which is going to be a little bit different than all the others. At this point, we're not having a look back window because we don't really have the same type of engagement as we do with website and YouTube visitors. Here we need to decide if this list expires. In some instances, maybe they don't. You always want to be able to retarget these users, or maybe you always want to be able to exclude these users or you can set the duration to expire after a certain number of days. So in this instance, I would say that all of these users would be in this list and eligible for 90 days, and then they would phase out and they would no longer be active. I do see some people getting tripped up on this. They think it's the look back window of everybody who has been engaging for the last 90 days. And in some ways that's true, but unless you create a new customer list, or augment this one with new users every so often, this list will effectively become obsolete after 90 days. Let's move on to the next section, and that's going to be Google Analytics. The first thing we need to do here is choose our GA4 profile. So if I come up here, you can see that we have one linked. We get this warning that says, by clicking continue, you'll open the GA4 workspace, and all audiences will be saved in Google Ads as a segment and in your GA4 property as an audience. They'll also be shared following whatever sharing rules you have set up for your GA4 profile. So for now, let's click continue because I'm fine with all that. And here we have the audience builder in GA4. Now I'm not going to go through this entire builder here because there's a ton of different options that we have available. We do have an older video that you can check out at the top of the screen right now that'll walk you through creating GA4 audiences, but more than likely we'll probably put together a new video here sometime soon. But on the short side, you can create an audience from scratch based on any of the GA4 parameters, or you can use a template, what they're calling a reference, for different active or non-active users, purchasers. You can follow one of their templates around demographics, technology, or acquisition, or you can use one of their predictive audiences. As you can see here, this is one of the reasons I gave the disclaimer at the beginning. We're definitely not eligible to use these because we don't have a lot of data flowing through, but you could do likely seven-day purchasers likely first-time purchasers, churning purchasers, all sorts of different things. Once you were finished creating that audience, as it said, it would show up in your Google Ads segments as well as your GA4 profile. Now the last option to create a brand new remarketing audience is going to be in the lead form segment down here. And this is only because we've created a lead generation form in our Google Ads account. So if you don't see this from your list, that's because you have not used a lead form in Google Ads. If you're interested in how to do that, you can check out the video at the top of the screen right now, and Joe will walk you through it. But for now, let's go ahead and click into this. We would then first get to choose customer type, which again, we'll talk about in a later video. But then the only real options we have here are to check into our different forms. As you can see, both of these are disapproved. But for each of these, you would be targeting the people who filled out these forms or the forms that you choose to add into your audience. 
There's no other parameters around this. You don't get to choose like with LinkedIn or Facebook where somebody opened but didn't submit, opened and submitted, none of that. It's only if they submitted the lead gen form. You then need to check the same box that everything was collected through policies that are in compliance with Google's customer match policy. Now, one option you do have here is around submission date. This will be effectively the same as a look back window. So if they filled out the lead gen form in the last 540 days, they'll be applied. But if I change this to 549, you'll see here that it will not let me do that because our date range can only be one to 540 days. That's the maximum, that's all we can do. So I'll switch that back. And then as you can see here for membership duration, that is updated daily based on your submission dates which basically means that it's gonna operate the same as a regular membership duration. You then get to add the description and the type. We don't get to change the type. A lead form is a type of customer list. Now there's one last thing I wanna cover in this area and it was part of the dropdown up here when you create a new list. So we just went through website visitors, app users, YouTube users, customer list, Google Analytics, and lead gen form. The last option is a custom combination. As you can see in the description here, it's a list created from multiple existing remarketing lists. So basically we get to leverage the lists that we just created, but in conjunction with each other. So let's go ahead and click this option. Now we do have some disclaimers up here at the top. This is telling us that we get to select audience segments to combine into one segment, but that by combining certain segment types, we may see unintended list sizes. So they could be pretty big is what they're saying. Using similar audience segments in a combination is only eligible for search and YouTube. And I believe at this point, all similar audiences have been phased out. Could be wrong, but we probably shouldn't have that issue anymore. Now, the first thing we get to do is choose our logic for anybody in this box. So here we can choose none of these audience segments, each of these audience segments, meaning an and statement, or we can set things up as they are for default, any of these audience segments, which is an or statement. Let's leave it as this one for now and I'm just gonna go ahead and pick a couple. So let's say we wanna choose anybody in our all website visitors for paid media pros, or we wanna target anybody who has watched any video as an ad in the last 540 days. So now we're gonna be targeting everybody in this list and everybody in this list, but they do not have to be in both because we're only using an or statement. We could switch this to an and statement, and that would mean that they would need to be in both website visitors and have seen an ad from our YouTube channel. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it as an or statement because we also have the option to click and down below, then we have an additional box. So again, I'm just gonna click a couple of these audiences here just for fun. So now we're targeting in this custom combination, anyone who has visited our website, as well as anybody who've seen an ad from our YouTube channel, but they also have to have been a visitor according to our Google ads tag and a user of our Podia site. So this and selector here has narrowed the audiences that we have in the top field. But again, we also have the option to set this as none of these segments, each of these segments, or or. If you wanted to narrow down the top audiences we have up here, you could change this to none of these. And now we're targeting anybody who's been to the website or seen a YouTube video as an ad, but not targeting anybody who is an all visitors from Google ads, which doesn't really make sense. And we're also excluding anybody who's visited our Podia site. So that would be another way to narrow down the users from that top set. But rather than focusing only on these users, we are excluding these users. Down at the bottom, once you have all of your different parameters that you have in place, you would then have the option to add a description. You're not able to set your look back windows because each of those is set at the individual audience level. So whatever parameters you have set up there will apply in these custom combinations. But this is a great way to start to extend your reach beyond just website visitors or just YouTube users into a combined segment that takes a more holistic approach to your remarketing and focuses on the right type of users across the platform. So that's it for a pretty quick overview of all of the retargeting options that you have for Google Ads under the Your Data Segment section. These are going to be all of the data sources that you own, but again, we're going to start covering some of the other options that we have here in future videos and how they all work together. But for now, if you have any questions about remarketing on Google Ads or honestly anything else in this Audience Manager section, feel free to leave us a note in the comments below.